Howdy folks, welcome back. So, on this episode of Trains with Shane, we are going to open up an eBay purchase and find out if it runs. Um, this is a GP40 by Bachman that I bought used off of eBay for $38. It was originally 28 bucks plus ten dollars and some odd change shipping so shipping was a tiny bit high but I figure I'm into it for less than forty dollars if it runs it's not too bad of a deal now the seller did not say that it didn't run so this is kind of a, a roll of the dice but I figured maybe it'll make a good video this actually came packaged in the box as you see it. It was wrapped in the bubble wrap outside of this box and then everything else was packed pretty well with uh, with additional bubble wrap and stuff. So, let's see what we've got here. Ah, there's our tape. You guys are seeing this with me for the first time. All right. Behold. All right, so what do we have? It is a GP40. Road number 3500 split frame you guys see that it says made in China as Bachmann's are handrails on this thing are pretty solid I guess I should get you guys back in the frame here rear handrails good let's check the flip side horns nothing broken Seems to be in pretty decent shape. Looks like it may have been lubricated recently too. Wheels are clean. Looks like we've got two traction tires here and here. So at first appearances, this thing is in great shape. Looks like we've got some form of knuckle couplers on here. They do not appear to be spring-loaded disconnect couplers. Pretty hefty. Um, I've got one other split frame from around this era. It's a GP50, and uh, it's a really good runner. So I'm hoping this one is too. So let's, uh, hmm, yeah, let's take it over to the switching layout and try it there. I do have a little circle track, as you can see here on the uh, disgusting workbench, but uh, I can get much better film from over there on the on the little switching layout so we will pick you up right back over there all right guys we are over here on the layout with our new st40 excuse me gp40 let's see if she runs power light whoop oh, had to really juice it up and that's as far as she gets. Come on. Full power. Not impressing me so far. It could just need a little lubrication. Let's change directions. Sorry for the nausea cam, guys. See how the light is kind of sketchy here? That makes me believe that we might have an electrical pickup issue when we have light and we have power. It moves, and pretty quietly, not great. So, let me turn the power off. We will get this back over to the disgusting workbench and see what we've got. 
All right, guys, back on the disgusting workbench. Um, we've got a, a new product here. This is a Bowser uh, foam locomotive cradle, end scale. Um, I figured if I'm going to do these little uh, videos, I figured it'd be cool to have just to uh, free up some hands for actual diagnostics. And if I'm going to be maintaining locomotives and rolling stock anyway, then this would probably be handy to have. I picked this and an HO scale version uh, up on eBay from this shop right here. I'm not sure if you call it Lehighton or Layton or Lehighton Hobbies. Um, obviously they're in Pennsylvania. Here's the information. Um, I picked these up from his eBay store, but uh, looks like he has his own uh, website and does mail orders and orders over phone. Um, I got this the next day after I ordered it from Pennsylvania to Texas. That's pretty quick. Of course, some of that was due to U.S. Postal, but the the fella obviously got it shipped out fast so good on him for that um, let's unbox this dude so we can get down to business find out why our locomotives don't run and here we are Uh, I think these were 11 or $12. Yeah, it's it's just a piece of foam, but it's probably going to be pretty useful. All right, waiting here in the wings is our, uh, our locomotive that is kind of stuttering. Honestly, this looks really good. I'm going to see if I can get the, uh, the shell off here. Try to be careful and not uh, damage it. Watch as soon as I say that now, it'll snap the thing off. Come on. There we go. Alright. Set this aside. Um, check this out. Okay. So, see our oil here, here, and I don't know if you can tell, but there was oil on the armature as well. So I'm thinking we may have a, a case of just an over lubricated unit here. Okay, we should be able to split this shell just by removing these two Phillips head screws on here. Yep, and these uh, little inserts are captive back here. handy little place to put our parts down here. I think I would have made the foam a different color so that black parts stand out against it. Pretty trivial though, doesn't matter. Okay, here's a pro tip if you guys have never been in one of these N-scale uh, locomotives before. I recommend setting it down like this. 
and be careful when you split the chassis apart here. Gently press down on the motor so that it stays with the, uh, the half of the chassis that's facing downward. Okay. Ooh. Isn't that tasty? Pretty gummy. Not optimal. Also not horrible. Let's see. Looks like we've got a pretty... Let me see if I get these trucks out of here. Dog bones. For reference, it looks like the uh, the short sides of the dog bone go into the motor. Same on the other side for this truck. Just set those aside in their proper orientation. Um, before we get into the engine and stuff, let's take a look at the trucks here real quick. Standard worm gear setup. These little uh, copper. You guys can see that. Can I turn up the light brightness. It's as bright as the overhead light gets. Um, these little copper wipers here pick up uh, the power from the the wheels and transfer it up to the frame, and then the frame transfers it to the contacts on either side of the motor here. Uh, the design is actually pretty simple and clever. Uh, basically, there's no wiring to mess up. The, uh, the entire frame itself conducts the electricity from the track to the motor. <coughs> Pardon me, not COVID. Right. Both of these tracks have a number two on them. see how uh, yeah look how much oil and stuff is in there I'm not sure we can do a ton about that for now um, but at least we're not dealing with excessive drivetrain friction due to uh, the dried lubrication at least I don't think we are so we're gonna set that aside check our other truck also pretty smooth um, you want to inspect these little uh, these little copper transfer bars and you want to make sure that they're not really bent out of shape um, I was in the process of lubricating my little Bachman GP50 and uh, kind of ham fisted it when I put it back together and got one of these mangled a little bit. Right. Here is our motor. Looks like we got a little piece of plastic here. Probably as a, a conductive isolator. Make sure we put that back on. We do have a cogging action. Um, if you roll one of these over and it's too smooth and you don't feel a bump, 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 bump when you roll one over, um, it could be a sign that the magnets are wore out, which can be a problem. Um, the motor will probably still work, but it'll probably run hotter and draw more current than it would if these magnets were really good. These feel pretty great. Um, our commutator looks kind of scongy. Um, I don't have a fiberglass pencil for this, so a trick I heard was to use a pencil eraser. Um, I'm not sure I trust that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
probably see if I can find a Q-tip or something and clean this off and try to take some care not to get the fibers down into the engine. So let me go find something and we will be right back. Okay, I have found a Q-tip or a cotton swab, it's a generic name. Um, not optimal, but I couldn't find a pencil in this digital age we live in and apparently my iPhone doesn't have an eraser app so this is what we've got so this is what we'll use Let's see if I don't need five hands here I wonder if I can just get this done I'm sorry if I get this out of view of the of the viewfinder guys getting better. Notice we're starting to fray a little bit here on the end of our uh, swab, so we're going to switch to the other side. Not bad. Making improvements. Uh-oh. Looks like we managed to wind up a little bit of fiber in there. Which is what I was afraid of. Tweezers to the rescue. Okay. I think we're alright. Um, if this were an HO scale locomotive, I would probably get something in between the separations of the commutator and try to clear out carbon buildup, which can cause things to not run right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. This is not the optimal tool, by the way. Okay, we're going to spin this around and hold it by the other side. This needs to be done very, very carefully. There is a little bit of scongy junk in there. Roll over to the next one. Oh yeah. Dug some fuzz out of there. That may have been our own doing. Alright, three pole motor. So we've got three divides here. Now don't go digging this thing in here like you're looking for the Ark of the Covenant. The, uh, the movements need to be uh, very gentle if you are going to use a hobby knife to try to clean your commutator grooves. Okay hobby knife away. We're going to go back to our Q-tip here and take care of the uh, mess that is these frame halves. And guys, if one of these comes out of your ear looking like this, you should probably consult an ENT. And that's an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Okay, quite an improvement. Still scongy on the edges. Let's see. That's interesting. Check this out, guys. There's a little piece of electrical tape. Wonder why that was there. Um, not there from the factory. Wonder if this unit was having other issues. These are our surfaces 
where the power gets transmitted. Not too crusty. Let's give it a little gentle clean. On this side too, this one's actually fairly smooth, so we're not bad there. Stand by one. I'm gonna go get a uh, another Q-tip. All right, we are set up. Gonna remove our little headlight here. Bachman just uses the wires of the headlight friction fit into this little channel here in the frame. One on each end. Another little piece of insulative masking going on. Be mindful of these little spacers in here. They will fall out when you're not looking, and you'll never see them again. Interesting. Again, something I don't think was on there from the factory. At least I've never seen it on another uh, Bachman N scale that I've opened up. My GP50. So, let's uh, look at that junk. I'm hoping that we were right, and this is just a, a pickup issue. Pretty scongy. That's a David Freiberger word. If, uh, if you're a car guy, look him up if you don't know who he is. Up locations look decent. Okay, so I'd say that's it for the uh, the frame sides. I am not going to disassemble these trucks. I do not believe that they are end user serviceable. Uh, so much so that I think the trucks are actually sold complete. So we're just going to try to get in here and uh, gently wipe away any excess funkies that might be on our contact surfaces here. Although given the distance here, it is not, uh, not easy to get anything in there. So, okay, let's put this sucker back together. Do, do. We're going to gently spread out the wires on these bulbs. See that? To this one looks fine, but you want them to be sprung out to create a little bit of friction fit in these channels, like I told you. Now when you look at these channels, they look mostly okay, but I do see a tiny bit of lubrication residue, so... Yeah. Right, let's reassemble. These contact points have holes in them. At first I thought it was just schmutz, but... Okay. Take our little plastic shield here. Slip that back over that side. OK, 
Okay, what am I not getting right here, guys? Shout it out in the comments. Notice how we're not perpendicular here. Does not seem to fit down in that hole. Why is that? Maybe there are some shoulders it fits on. There's a lug here. Does that locate on something? This little slot in the front of the motor here is too thin to go over that lug. Well, there's really nothing from keeping us from putting it over in this side. Assuming we're putting this thing back together right, it could have been put together backwards. There is a hole here to locate. Either the front bearing or rear bearing block. There we go. Okay. We had it 180 out from the looks of it. Which means it goes 180 this way. Yep. Since this has the, uh, the cutouts in it, we're going to reassemble back in this half here. Okay, notice the contact here. That bar is clean and dry, so... Put that back together like that. To flip this so that it is right side up. Set these lights in their slots. Be gentle with these because I haven't done it yet, but I'm sure people have broke off these dog bones are pretty funky looking so I think we're going to uh, yeah tasty Okay, clean-ish. Now let's see if I can assemble these things. Okay, that splines into there. See, it has a corresponding spline in there. You see this little raised area on the truck sits inside a recess here. Why did I get into end scale? Okay, that's in there. I believe we're okay. So we're going to flip our half around here and 
act like we have six different hands to put this thing together. Now don't force this thing guys. If you're putting it together right, it will fall into place. Make sure your trucks wiggle. Because if you get one bound up in there, see, look at that. That spring is folded up under there. So if we ran this, I'd end up mangling that spring. We don't want that. So we're gonna gently pull back apart. are on this one fine let's see we're still out over here we've also dropped our light let's get our trucks Okay, front truck is in fine. Though our engine is misaligned now, so let me set this back down. Regroup. Flip it over. There goes our other light. Not a big deal. We can shove that in there after the fact. What a soup sandwich. If you don't hold your tongue just right, these never go in. It was a skill I have not yet mastered. So, so we fumble around with it. There we go. All right. I believe we're in the proper grooves. Let's get our body oriented and try this again. Front truck good, back truck not good. Like I said guys, these little N-scale locomotives are fiddly fiddly. It is definitely an exercise in frustration. And then how steady your hands are. Okay. See, and we have messed it up yet again. This time on the front truck. Get that out of there. Nope, still not right.
Part of me wants to put a jump cut in here, but part of me really wants to show you guys how many times it took to get this right. All right, now we're gonna use a time honor practice known as cheating. Let's see if we can dig this up out of here gently. Okay, good. See, now we've got all of our contacts on the outside here. Like I said, I managed to mangle up my uh, my GP50. Slightly, I'm trying to put it back together. Dropped a keyed. Screw fitting thingy. And we dropped it again. Sorry guys, it's my first time doing this on camera. So you guys get to see all the screw-ups I go through. Not gonna edit it for television like that anyway. These things have to line up correctly with the little separator here that electrically divides the frame in half. See, like this one here. Looks like a little isolator, if you guys can see that. It's just a tiny bit rearward. Center that with the uh, screwdriver. We are still not going in. I'm gonna get the rear screw started on this thing. Go backwards a little bit till you feel the threads line up. Snug it up. I'm gonna hold this up to the light, guys, sorry. It doesn't look terribly out of round, so this thing should just drop right in. Oh, oh. Progress. Make sure we're splined in there. There we go. Put our thumb over that, find our screw. Now check your alignment on these. You want to be sure that this isn't touching, like here to here, this isn't up in here touching. These little isolators keep it so that the, uh, the sides of the frame are spaced far enough apart that electricity doesn't uh, jump from one to the other. It has to go through the contacts of the motor to get its power. So now that the horror is over, let's gently reinsert our lights. Is that the right way? Nope. Why didn't you guys say something? All right. These are not held in there with a, a whole lot of friction, so gentle hands.
Man, guys, I am ham fisting everything today. Giggity. Let's see. Sorry guys, I didn't have you in the frame there. See, we have to uh, align the wires up with the flat sides on either side of this gap here. The light bridge bridges the uh, physical gap in here. That's how... Uh, There we go. That's how it gets its power. Because otherwise, the two sides of the frame, as we talked about earlier, are electrically isolated by those rubber space not rubber, those plastic spacers. There we go. The um, the lights also help separate. Okay. Well, wasn't that a lot more tedious than it needed to be? All right, guys. Let's see if we can slide our shell back on. If this all works out, I will take it back apart and lubricate. Back to the test track. Okay guys, we're back over here on the tiny switching layout. Let's make sure we're on, put her in forward, dial it up, see what we get. Ooh, life. Consistent movement. Dialed up pretty high, but we are running on battery power over here. Let's give her some beans. Not bad, let's bring it back. Full throttle. All of those nine volts. A little noisy. Feather it in. So you really have to give it power and it kind of wants to surge forward. That's not bad. Not great. Dial up a little more power. Let's come back. See, we got lights, no movement. Dial up more power. Yeah, it's that just gets kind of hung up a little bit. Okay, let's turn that off. Not bad. Certainly an improvement over where it was when we got it. Um, honestly, I don't think this thing had a whole lot of use on it. Um, judging by, I don't know, a bunch of different factors. I think that those pieces of tape uh, we're in there maybe to improperly diagnose something. Um, I don't know. I just uh, took it apart, cleaned it, put it back together. And uh, it seems to be working now. So we're going to call this video right here and call this a win. Um, it went on a little bit longer than I was expecting um, on the workbench. But like you know, um, fiddly little in scale bits HO is much easier to work on heck if this keeps up who knows maybe we'll be working on O scale because those are the least fiddly um, these guys 
will be coming up in a future video. Stand by, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, also, before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to Harrison over at SMT uh, Mainline in Canada for uh, showing us how it's done. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Bye. Quick additional update. I put her on the disgusting layout circle track, which has uh, an AC to DC uh, transformer on it. Ran it around a couple of times after lubricating, and slow speed has definitely improved. It's not great, but uh, for a non-flywheel three-pole engine, it uh, isn't too bad. I did notice it um, was slightly skew-wound, but uh, certainly not a five-pole. Let's give her a give her a little. A little noisy, a little grindy sounding, which is weird because I lubricated it, it kind of groans. But uh, you really give her the onions, she flies. So let's bring her down. My track isn't 100% clean, but it's clean ish. Not bad. This one will get a positive feedback on eBay.